All right, next up, I'm very excited to introduce Lydia Burns and Jamie Smith from the student voice team Woo! of the Pritchard Committee for Academic Excellence High School students from Kentucky. Take it away. We are here on behalf of the Pritchard Committee Student Voice Team, a self-selected self group of about 90 middle school, high school, and college students from across Kentucky. We work to amplify and elevate the voices of Kentucky's young people to improve public schools. And that pretty much explains how uh, two high school students ended up on this stage uh, here with some of the likes of the most brilliant education policy experts in the country. <laughs> <laughs> but that's enough about us. Let's drive, let's, um, Let's drive straight into the wonkery. So here's the two minute highlights of our proposal. Okay, so the first objective in our design is to create a holistic view of school quality that isn't entirely based on academics. The Handbook of Economics of Education states, school accountability measures are most effective when they identify what a school is contributing to students and not what, a, not what students are contributing to a school. We also acknowledge that accountability systems by themselves do not have the ability to increase student achievement or growth. It is, the hands, it is in the hands of educators to inspire actual learning. So in the spirit of ESSA and localized control, we wanted to create a system that would provide stakeholders with the information they need to better their school systems with data that is targeted and helpful. So our indicators for achievement and growth are academic proficiency, which would be calculated based on the percentage of third, fourth, and fifth grade students scoring at or above proficiency in math and ELA assessments, uh, student progress over time, which would be calculated using student growth percentiles, and schools would be um, awarded points for students making adequate and exceptional gro growth on yearly assessment, and closing performance gaps, which um, would be tracked by the growth of four historically at risk um, some groups, including English language learners. Educational policy is built around a single group of stakeholders, students. The reason we have accountability systems at all is to ensure students are receiving a quality education. Our proposal allows students to speak for themselves, or we could say speak for ourselves, instead of relying on numbers alone to indicate a school's success. Countless studies, including those of Dr. Ferguson at Harvard and Tripod, also featured here today, have shown the benefits of tracking school climate measures, especially during periods of institutional change. And worth noting here is that some of those studies have been conducted not simply with students, but also by them. When the student voice team conducted a student voice audit of a Kentucky middle school, we were able to see firsthand how a large disconnect between administrators, teachers and students can affect in schools overall functionality. We know student voice and agency matter in assessing the health and effectiveness of our schools and that is why we feel so strongly about including student voices in our accountability system. A school's overall score will be calculated by the sum of its points earned. Schools will receive a raw score for each of the aforementioned indicators, which will then be converted into points. The overall score of a school will indicate which of the four ratings it will earn. As students ourselves, we firmly believe that the best education policy is built with us and not around us. That is the heart of what we hope to convey by integrating student voice in our proposal. Thank you for reading it, and thanks for hearing us out. Great job, great job. All right, well done, well done. That was incredibly well done. Uh, okay, let's start with Charlene, questions? Yeah, first of all, excellent, excellent presentation. Um, and I really appreciated your point about the focus of all of this being students and student improvement. Um, in fact, I think my question has to do with the after effects, uh, which really is, a, yes, school climate's important, um, particularly, as you mentioned, during transition. Um, my questions are two. One is, what happens at schools that don't have the performance gap you're talking about? How does that fit into the whole system? Um, and my second, do you want to answer that one first? Uh, yeah, um, so in our design, we have outlined that for a school that doesn't have 20 students that are identified in one of the four sub, um, sub subgroups that we laid out, um, that percentage that would be in student like gap growth would then just go to regular growth. Um, we modeled that off of Massachusetts and Tennessee systems. Thank you. And my next question has to do with this idea at the end of, you know, the interventions of a planning committee. Um, I totally believe in student voice and teacher voice and community voice. I'm a little concerned about the idea, though, of this committee. Um, it seems like too many cooks in the kitchen. What do you guys think about that? They're representing the Pritchard Committee. I mean, this is, you know, it kind of goes in their blood here. I think this is the important. Yeah. Um, that's a really good point. Uh, it's not really something that occurred to us. We based it off of Florida's uh, eight-step system, and um, we think it's really important to, to uh, have at least a somewhat of a representation of a large variety of stakeholders. 
you know, I noticed that you talked a lot about the importance of those climate indicators, yet they're only, they only count for something like 6% of the score. So why, why is that? Why do you have it weighted so low? We were really afraid that we would get the illegal scoring rating. Uh, personally, we think, <laughs> we think those are really important, but we wanted to Turned be out, legal. That's not a problem up here. So. We wanted to be legal. <laughs> Uh, so that's, uh, we looked at the law a lot and we found it really, really confusing. So I don't know if any of you guys wrote that, but like, it's really hard to understand. I don't actually have my high school diploma yet, so like, I needed a little help. Um, so uh, David, we were really clearly, that one's for you out there, okay? Yes, uh, all right. I just wanted to make sure that it was like feasible. That's right, that, that the law makes it clear that these other indicators are supposed to count quote, much more uh, than the, uh, the non-act. If you could put that percentage to be what you think it's worth, what would it be? I would need to do more research. <laughs> Woo! Wow, people are going to love that on Twitter because uh, people have been, uh, yes. Mike, can I ask just one question? In reading Index 4, School Climate, it's very heavily weighted towards students. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yet many of your parents are the reasons you're going to school where you go because they choose to live in the neighborhoods they live in before you ever went to school. So what about the use of parent surveys and even teacher surveys um, in your, your school climate? That is actually something we played around with and was actually in the design until one of its very latest phases. Um, the reason that we did that is because the indicator was weighted so smallly that we wanted, we didn't want teacher voice and like, or and parent voice and all that stuff to like so far outweigh student voice that it wasn't accounted for at all. And because the students are the ones affected by all of the change that's made in the schools and by the accountability and the effectiveness of the system, we felt it was most important that their voices were heard. Over yeah, those we other and we wanted to weight student uh, surveys have more, like more heavily, but like with how small it was, that just didn't happen. Big round of applause for the students. Um, the Student Voice Team Pitcher Committee for Academic Excellence. Awesome job, guys. Head on down. All right, we're going to vote. Now, don't go easy on them just because they're kids, okay? Come on. Whoever's been throwing that hate every time. No, just kidding. All right, to get those phones out. Let's vote. By the way, this is such a great idea. I love the, the Pritchard Committee is a state-based education reform and policy organization in Kentucky. Uh, such a great idea to have a student voice team. I think uh, reform groups, unions, uh, everybody involved in these uh, should do the same. Okay, what do we see here? Two percent of the people here are just churlish, uh, unforgiving <laughs> souls. <laughs> I think it would be illegal. Why would it be illegal? This is, I don't get that. Okay, half like it, half love it. Very positive. Okay, let's start. Uh, Tony, let's start with you. So I, I have to tell you, I, why, your explanations put me over the top. I, when I read these and went through it, I gave it a definite like it, and I kept thinking I could love this if there were some clear indicators. And I have to tell you, it was the easiest one of the whole lot to explain. Um, so, and, and I would also tell you that I love it from the perspective that Dale Chu, you would have been unemployed had these two ladies applied for a job <laughs> in the Department of Education. <laughs> and, and, and to that, I just want to say our movement needs young people, smart, passionate young people like you. So don't ever get out of this business. Your, your efforts are worth it. Thank you. Thank you. You're here. It really is feeling like American Idol. That, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, I am in the like it, um, but I agree. Totally love the participation, civic involvement, interest. The reason I'm like it specifically is I am too much of an advocate of teacher and parent voice as well. Your explanation made a lot of sense to me, uh, but I think that's where the research can be done to figure out where those voices can get added in as well. Great. Joanne? I'm in the love it category, um, and I loved it. I guess I was put over the top the same as Tony by your explanation because you actually answered a couple of the questions that I had. I think, for example, at the elementary level, you might be better off with parent surveys and at the high school level with student surveys, so I think there's some tweaks like that that I might make to it. But I thought your answers were fabulous. I thought the thoroughness of the work you did was like outstanding. You can stand with any wonk in this room anytime. Trust me, your citations and the research you did were amazing. And I think you came up with something that is 100% legal. I wouldn't have worried at, at the margins that you did and is really creative and thoughtful. And I love the, the way that you incorporated student voice, especially the open-ended comments, which you didn't talk about. But I thought that was very clever. OK, Andy. 
so I also loved it. Um, I thought you guys did great. Seriously, thank you for coming and for the work that you put into this. Uh, the only question I would raise is I think collectively we have to think really hard about, I have a student who's in school, his name is Will, and he's five years old. And what that means, uh, his voice in his school system should be a whole lot different than your voice in your school system. And I just think we're probably a couple years away from thinking about what student voice looks like in elementary school, middle school, high school. We can get there, um, but when I talk about how schools are a whole lot more than test scores, um, this has to be part of the, the algorithm we use. So All thanks. right. Great job, judges. Great job, students. Very excited. Love it.